Hello, everyone. This is Max Shou from National University of Singapore. So let me give you a brief introduction of our challenge and quickly summarize the experimental setup for different chunks. So basically, I will talk about how we annotated the data set, what does it look like, and what are the experimental requirements for check one, basically focus on generally when the boundary detection, and also check two, which is more towards like seeking innovative solutions that demonstrate the value of generally when the boundaries on downstream applications. So in the recent years, we have seen significant progress in action localization or action segmentation, basically about detecting temporal units of actions. So for action localization is basically detecting start time and end time of a predefined action class like jump. And for action segmentation is essentially like preferred classification problem. We have seen uh, great progress in both areas, but most of them are built upon limited set of predefined action classes. But in Coke science, there's a series so-called event segmentation theory, which has been well studied for decades. It basically tells us that while watching long videos, human naturally segment it into chunks without any kind of like predefined action classes and even be, without being asked to do so explicitly. So this is quite interesting and triggers us to think about, can we develop a model that can localize the moments where humans naturally perceive even boundaries rather than predefined classes. Um, that's why we put forward this new task called generic even boundary detection. So generic even boundary um, could happen in many cases. For example, in the first video, this is a long jump video. Uh, when the person originally is running, there is a video editing effect, basically shortcut. And we definitely could consider this is a event boundary. And when the person changes from running to jumping, this is another event boundary. When the person changes from jump to stand up, there's another boundary. The last two boundary are more about change of action. And there could be other boundaries that really not about action change. For example, in the second video, originally there's no subject, no human. And then this uh, woman walks into the scene. And as human beings, we could consider this as a, even a boundary about a new subject appears. And in the last example, originally the scene is dark. When the light is turned on, it becomes bright. So this is another kind of event boundary, more about situational or environmental change. So it's pretty challenging to annotate these kind of like general event boundaries on, uh, especially the conventional computer vision data set. Um, so there is no such annotation previously, and we basically annotate such moments where humans naturally perceive event boundaries on four data sets. Uh, Kinetics, HMDB, these are two data sets that's relatively short, like 10 seconds each video. And also another two data set, ADR and UT Eagle Century. They are pretty long, like a few hours long per video, but the number of videos are relatively small. Uh, we focus on the Kinetics data set in our competition because it's quite popular nowadays for action classification and also uh, it contains a diverse categories uh, and also a large number of event boundaries, event segments. So here is a quick comparison between our data set and other um, amazing action data set. So if you look at the last two rows, uh, our kinetics and uh, uh, kinetics GBD clean. So the row version is the uh, uh, basically the version before cleaning and after cleaning, uh, we use the uh, clean version as the uh, data set in the competition. And compared to the previous data set, we can see the uh, number of segments and the number of boundaries over is much larger than the previous data. 
And also our data set is not limited to a specific domain like spas or kitchen. It's uh, uh, more generic, it's uh, in the wild. And for the boundary cause, it's no longer just uh, due to action chain. It could be also quite generic, like a new subject appears or a situational change. Furthermore, we do not limit ourselves to a predefined action taxonomy. We are taxonomy free. Lastly, it's quite interesting that uh, different people actually may consider the event boundary at different moments in a certain video. So to respect such a uh, human perception diversity, we actually annotate uh, five uh, annotations per video. Uh, so we have provided more details in the white paper. You can refer to that if you're interested. And also we have provided a starter code base on GitHub contains um, some baseline implementations and then bridge and models. And also we have a QA form that has been used in the past uh, several months to communicate with our participants to sort out their questions. And finally, we are very pleased to receive more than 20 teams participating in our challenge, including uh, universities across the globe and also uh, companies like ByteDance and Alibaba. So let me give you some uh, colors about check one, generally when boundary detection. We have a uh, chain valley test displays and they are of like similar scale, basically similar number of videos, segments and number of boundaries. And the participant can use chain and valley set to change their model and finally test on the test set. Basically we compete on the test set. In terms of the evaluation metric, we use the so-called relative distance. So basically say if the red triangle is uh, our prediction uh, and the green triangle is the uh, ground truth, then we would measure the distance between these two. Um, then similar to IOU, if this offset, this distance is within 5% of the whole video duration, Basically, on kinetics, the whole video is usually 10 seconds long. So 5% is around half seconds. And if it's within this uh, 5%, then we consider this detection is uh, correct. And the metric we use is F1 score. Uh, also note that since we have multiple annotations, multiple review, then a detection result is compared against each rater's annotation to get our F1 score individually. And then we would pick the best F1 score as the final score for that uh, detection. Uh, so let me give you some uh, introduction of the instruction we used for this uh, check one. Essentially we had two different uh, scenario, two different setups uh, and so-called subtrack 1.1 and subtrack 1.2. For both of them, uh, we, uh, the participants are allowed to use pre-trained model as initialization for the backbone network they developed for temporal boundary detection. So basically they can uh, use backbone pre on kinetics uh, or they can use backbone pre on image net, but they are not allowed to use uh, any additional annotation of temporal boundaries regardless used for training or used for testing. And what's the difference between subject 1.1 and 1.2, right? So subject 1.1 is basically more open. Um, we, they are allowed to use any kind of video data for training, essentially. These videos uh, could come from just uh, uh, some, uh, other data set like ActivityNet or even just some kind of web data set. And, and also the participants are allowed to use supervision, additional supervision to train models for upstream tasks. For example, they could, if they want to use an object detection model that has been trained on COCO and then apply the object detection model on our Kinetics GPD data set to obtain some intermediate bounding box detection results, that's okay. And also similarly, if they want to use some 
action localization model trained on ActiveNet to obtain some intermediate results on our Kinetics GBD dataset. That's okay. Um, but in the report, they must specify what kind of external data or upstream supervision have been used. And for subtract 1.2 is more, is basically more close. Um, they are not allowed to use any video other than our Kinetics GBD videos. And they cannot use any additional supervision uh, other than our GBD annotations. And, um, but know that it's okay to just use some like pre trained backbone for internalization. And here's a, a quick overview of the leaderboard for our subject 1.1. And you could see that for F1 score, which is the final metric, it has been improved from 0.6 something to 0.8, which is quite decent actually. And also for Subject 1.2, we actually receive even more submissions. Um, this is probably due to the uh, Subject 1.1 allows to use additional data and not really restricted so that uh, people uh, from, for example, universities who do not have enough computational power, they are uh, more like, you know, like towards to participate in Subject 1.2 which is like more restricted in terms of which kind of data they could use. Uh, okay, that's for check one. For check two, again, uh, the high level idea is to demonstrate the value of generic event boundaries on downstream applications. So basically, uh, we consider this kind of generic event boundaries are immediately useful for application like video editing or summarization. So think of like you go for travel for a few days and you have captured a lot of videos and you wanted to create a summary, maybe two minute summary for your trip. Then it's, 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 it's very useful if we have a, a model that you would be able to segment your captured videos into, uh, seg into segments, into chunks, and then you could just sample case from each of them and stick together to generate the, uh, summary for yourself. So this kind of like uh, directly used for application. And further, generative boundaries can also serve as stepping stone towards long form video modeling. For example, if we wanted to reasoning about the temporal structure of a very long video, we need to segment that into temporal units. And then based on that, we can conduct temporal units uh, reasoning. Uh, so essentially it's a very open problem and all the following scenarios are allowed if you just use like one of our annotated GBD data set or you use multiple of them or even you do not use any of our data set you um, annotate or even the boundaries uh, by yourself on other data set or you preach a model generic even boundary detection model and use that model to detect some kind of like pseudo label on other data set, all this uh, are okay for us for this check too. And in terms of evaluation, um, all these submissions have been uh, multi-graded by LabVIEW organizers, and there are several dimensions that we are particularly considered in evaluation. First of all is the relevance, basically relevance to generic event boundaries. It must be a key step uh, in your method and the also uh, impact and the significance on downstream tasks. For example, did you put state of star for kinetics classification? Did you develop a uh, comprehensive video uh, model that better than state of the art? There are also criteria like uh, technical soundness, um, the presentation quality of your report, and also uh, we want the um, submission to be uh, able to reproduce by other people. So did you, or will you release your code? Uh, there are also other uh, possible submissions. For example, a uh, video highlight or summarization data set. Uh, on, this data set should be very useful and this kind of boundaries used for summarization are often generic even boundaries. 
So, all right, that's all for my quick overview. I will stop here. Thank you so much. And let's look forward to the winner talks.